Hello, this is Bread Wild, and today we're going to try the Zebo. This is my first recording. I've done a lot of practicing in the what they call the Zebo mod, which is kind of a wrapper for the default 737 that comes with X-Plane. And this is the 737-800, so it's a little bit bigger than the uh, ones you might be used to. And we are in Palm Springs, which is Kilo Papa Sierra Papa, and we're going to fly up to my one of my favorite airports, which is San Jose, which is Kilo Sierra Joliet Charlie. And we should be landing there just as the uh, sun is going down, or more like dusk. <laughs> um, you know me, I like to fly when the lighting is uh, low in the sky, either early in the morning or late at night. So we're going to do some flight planning and then making our flight and hopefully an ILS approach into San Jose. So let's get started with some planning. So open up skyvector.com and uh, open up the flight plan panel here. Plug in your departure and origin. And I've got Palm Springs and San Jose. And you see we have a nice straight line. You'll know that changes as we plug in fixes and waypoints along our route. So I'm picking Cathedral 1 as a departure. Thermal 6 takes us to the southwest and we want to head to the northwest. Let me flip this around. So a couple things to note. I listened to ATIS and we are taking off on one runway uh, 13 right. So immediately after takeoff we do a climbing turn to a heading of 100 and then after crossing the radial 176 off of the Palm Springs VOR, we turn left to a heading of 40 degrees. And when we intercept the uh, 104 radial, we make a right turn and head to the fix Emrood and then circle back around, cross Palm Springs, VOR, and then begin our outbound route. And if you read the instructions here, you can see takeoff runway 13 right and left, climbing left turn heading 100 degrees to cross this Vortac Radio 176, then turn left heading 40 degrees to intercept the radial 104 fence. <laughs> um, and we climb to uh, Emrood and then turn right and head back towards the Palm Springs VOR. So that will be our SID out of Palm Springs. So back in Sky Vector, I added in those waypoints that I know of. So taking off, picking up Emerald, circling around, picking up Palm Springs, VOR, up to Soggy, and then over to our transition, which is PMD. Now let's kill that and pop open our map that shows high routes. So I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Can't get real close with this. So we're going to come to Lando. Add that to the plan. And then we'll come on. We've got a VOR here which is Avenal, and notice that it automatically figured out the rest of our route. So we've got a J6 
jet route J6 on up to the Salinas VOR and then notice over here it's giving us the Robbie a star so if I go down to let's see terminal arrival row before so here is Avenal over to Roby Big Sur Salinas and then our approach into San Jose so that route has been planned and you can see it's no longer a straight line a couple of dog legs in there so here we go back in the airplane and we start with battery on and close that up and I like to turn this even though it doesn't really do anything these are now on automatically uh, this is a newer version for some reason they're on by default but we and so is standby power we used to have to flip that to auto ground power is now on and we can turn on some lights and that's about all we need to do except turn on some air and before we set our IRS we'll go down to our FMC and do a couple of things um, turn on some backlighting here you can see that it does make a difference I'm not quite sure what this one does but go ahead and turn it on All right, go to advanced and just point this out. This is where you can set your fuel and payload and get your center of gravity. I don't really do anything with this. If you want to know more details, check out videos by Steve Haynes, who covers all of this very nicely. But I'm interested in other configurations, realism, align time, I want to be short. Might be a while before we get off the ground, but still set it for short and tire blown, <laughs> I want it off. And then do you want it to pause at top of descent? Uh, this gives you a chance to um, do, do set your altitude or whatever. Um, at top of descent. Go over to hardware and we need to set our nose wheel axis to yaw. This is for people who still have a joystick and want to have some control over that nose wheel, which I do. So back up to the top and go to our IRS I set this to heading status, flip to align, and then finally to nav, and then you can see that we only have one minute before it is set, which is great. Again, not that I'm going to get off the ground that fast, but um, nice to know that that's taken care of. All right, back to our FMS. I do have the latest nav data in. So click on FMC and we'll set our position. So you go to the next page and you click to set these coordinates to the scratch pad. Then go back and place them in for your IRS. And you can see that the ND and PFD lit up. And our airport is going to be K Sierra. But no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is Kilo. Uh, 
Papa, Sierra Papa, Palm Springs. I'm going to leave the gate blank, go over to Route. Notice it's in the scratch pad, so I just click it for the origin. Now I need to put in San Jose, which is Kilo, Sierra, Juliet, Charlie. And our runway is 13 right. And now performance initialization. I'm just going to go with the default values. There we go. And cost index right in the middle, 50. And then a cruise altitude, 320. And sim brief, which I'm not going to go into right now, but you can see in this chart what my values need to be. So I'm going to go with the value of flight level 360 and set that for my cruise and wind. So that would be 180 slash 44. And outside temperature was a balmy 46. And so what this does is it gives us our ISA differential. ISA is the standard aerobatic rate for temperature. So this just plots the difference. I'm not real sure what the FMC does with that, but that's the deal. Over to N1. I'm going to um, reduce my thrust. So I'm putting in 45 degrees, 36 centigrade, and now we've got a reduction of down to 96%. I'm going to leave this selected, this very first one, and go over to takeoff. Flaps are going to be 5. I'm going to go with the standard or the default here. Again, if you want more details, you can watch one of Steve Haynes' videos and he goes into a lot of good detail on that. And I'll just set my V speeds. And now we're ready to start planning our route. All right, let's start with our departure. And notice it's put in our SID, Cathedral 1, but our um, transition is thermal 6, which I don't want, so I'm just going to click this and it gets rid of it. So I don't need that. You can see our runway is already set, so I'm going to go ahead and click route and activate. Now when I go over to legs, you'll see that it's put in, because I'm taking off to the southeast, it's put in that uh, radial that I'm going to intercept and it looks like it's going to actually give me a waypoint so it might do some of the work for me and looks like our last waypoint is when we go back over the VOR um, PSP so now we have to manually put in our other waypoints so in order to get the rest of the waypoints in, you know, you know, as we just have a blank screen over here, you could enter them here, but the problem is you can't put in jet routes, and we have a couple of them. So go over to menu, click FMC, position initialization, route, and then next page. Maybe there's a faster way to get there, I don't know, but you can see the beginning of our route here. The SID and then the VOR. So what comes after the VOR? Well, we go with SAGI and we put waypoints fixes on the right side and then next is Palmdale. Again, right side. But this time it's saying, do you want one that's local or do you want one that's in, I don't know, Germany? <laughs> Not sure. And then we come to 
our jetway, which is J65, according to our uh, sky vector map. And we have to put the off ramp, as it were, and that would be Lando. And after Lando, we have another jet route, which is J6. And we get off on Avenal. Okay. Now we can go and do our arrival. So we click arrival into San Jose and find Robbie, which was suggested by Sky Vector as our star. And we're transitioning at Avenal and we're going to do an ILS approach into 30 right. And we'll use Gilro as our IAF, our initial approach fix. And now we can go over and look at our legs and make sure that we don't have any discontinuities, which we don't. Now, if you want, we can go over and step through our map. This should be interesting, actually. So, taking off, kind of looping around, and then Avenal, Robbie, Goalie, and then into uh, San Jose. There's one I want to get rid of here, because it's kind of strange. And let's fill and take care of our discontinuity. So it just smooths it out a little bit. So put this back on map. And we're ready to continue our startup. I'm going to call for our pushback because this guy takes a while to uh, complete things. So we'll plan our... All right, and then we'll back up into the lane and. All right, Captain, got the directions. Let me know through the menu when you're ready. Guy's very loud, so let's call him. Better push back. It's a great free plug-in. Great news, Captain. Your toe's coming. So here he comes. So while we're waiting, let's just go ahead and get some things taken care of. Let's start our APU. So we need to have fuel. And you should see this come up and then come back down. We can turn on our yaw damper. And let's just go with window heat and pitot tube. And I'm just checking here. We've got to arm our emergency lights. All right. Smoking. Looks like the doors and hatches are closed and we're ready to connect. And seat belts. And he should ask me to uh, kill the parking brake in a second. So our APU is up. We can click on the bleed and then APU generator. Welcome aboard, Captain. Toast connected. Bypass pens inserted. Go and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. So parking brake off. Here comes the pushback. Light them up.
so fuel on, electric pumps on, and in order to start, packs must come off. So getting pushed back here, so we'll start with our right engine. And you can see it spooling up here. And once it gets to 20 or so, we can add some fuel, which I will do. And then we can start our other engine. This will flip to auto in just a second. Put on our taxi light. And it's coming up. And we can apply fuel. Just about done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. And we're disconnecting the tow. Give me just a moment. Like I said, it takes a while for that guy to do everything he needs to do. And we can set our oxygen or cruise altitude, cabin altitude 3200 and we're landing about 200 feet now that our engines are started we need to turn on the generators and we can turn our packs back on we don't need the APU anymore, so we can turn that off. We don't need to set our course, but we do need to set this 20 over our V1 speed. So I believe it was 156. Although the speed does not have the same effect in the Zebo 737 as it does in the JAR. And then our heading, we want it to be at 100. But it looks like our FMS may be taking care of that for us. But let's just set it just in case. And then our altitude. We don't have any restrictions. We can just climb all the way up to flight level 320. We can arm our auto throttle flight director on both sides. And we can check our Um, Barrow. So I'm just going to roll over the weather here at Palm Springs and our Barrow is 29.87. So we can set that. So it looks like we are ready to taxi. Just drop in a couple of notches of flaps. And you can see that indicated up here. And we'll set our brake to RTO. And taxi on over to runway one three right.
sorry to cut you off there, but I'm just saving you a little taxi time. So here we are at the end of the runway. A couple things to do. How about some lights? So this, these two left switches have two positions. I've got runway turnoff lights on. We can go with our strobe now. Probably don't need our logo light on anymore. And we are ready to go. Start our timer over here. Passenger view. And we are cleared for takeoff. Slow advance. Toga. You can see N1 came on. Get centered here. Doing too well staying on the center here. V1, V1, rotate. And let's begin our 400. navigational because that's going to help us with our turn. see our turn here. So this is the 100 and then we'll take a 40. Now if we didn't have an FMS we would be using our VOR. Got dark. <laughs> we don't need our taxi lights. Turn off lights. Landing lights stay on. So now we're headed directly to Emrud. Well, maybe not directly. So let's see what happens here. So we're supposed to be 40, so maybe I should have done that manually, I'm not sure. And we're banking. I thought it might paint the right turn, 
So I'll be curious to know which way the FMS is going to have us turn. Maybe I should have plotted a couple of waypoints out here to nudge us in that direction. By the way, I meant to tell you, or didn't I, did I tell you, this nose wheel needs to be on roll. Otherwise, you won't have any control with your joystick. Did I mention that? Maybe not. Good, we are going to the right. Bermuda Dunes Airport. We make that big turn to head back over the VOR. And we're at 10,000 feet. Turn off our landing lights. Salt and sea off in the distance. We head back towards the airport here. Our BOR is probably somewhere in this general area. So the only reason I think they have you take that twisty turn route is that um, they get you over the mountains. You can see them up ahead, although we're well above them now. So there's our VOR, and then next will be soggy. This valley here, I think it's called the Moreno Valley, is what takes you straight west into the Los Angeles Basin. Palm Springs is directly east of LA. And this is Highway 10, major thoroughfare. Clouds and sky are courtesy SkyMax. And we're about ready to switch to standard barrow. turn towards soggy. Now, if you weren't paying attention, after we took off, I was in a hurry to click on VNAV, RNAV, and finally engage the autopilot. Those are the three things that were needed to get us both ascending and get us on our route laterally. And you can see our top of the climb here. Shows us missing it by a little bit. So 
So N1 is our power, LNAV, ENAV, using speed control. Now, the one thing I didn't do, and my friend Steve will point this out, I did not turn on my transponder. My bad. I've got a four-page checklist in front of me. You think I'd look at it? That's kind of pretty, isn't it? You can see Palm Springs, the airport here. This is about a 10,000 foot peak. I don't remember the name of it, but there is a cable car that goes all the way to the top, and then there's a big lodge up there. And uh, it's pretty. there's snow pretty much year round. And way off in the distance, you're going to have uh, San Diego. Pacific way out here. So I think we'll take a little break and you can join me in a few minutes. Soggy is straight ahead, just under eight miles out, and our top of descent or our top of climb keeps moving. <laughs> So we still got another 2,500 feet. I was watching some YouTube videos that were shot in Europe on Pilot's Eye, and they were taking off, and everything was in meters, which I thought was kind of interesting, but they were translating it to feet. <laughs> so here goes our turn as we head towards Palmdale. So much of our flight is going to be in the dark, it looks like. I tried to estimate dusk in San Jose, but it looks like I'm going to be a little bit off. But absolutely beautiful evening. So LA is over here, and we've got uh, places like Big Bear and Lake Arrowhead along this ridge. So we're flying just to the east of the LA Basin, and we are coming up on flight level 320. Here comes our marker. And then we can let people out of their seats. It's on auto. I'm not quite sure what that means, but... So, we'll just trip along here and you can uh, join me again in a few minutes. So Lando will be our next waypoint. So that will complete our J65 uh, airway and then we'll begin the J6 airway. Look over at our map. So we took off here, kind of spun around and then took off your soggy Palmdale and here's Lando so we're right here and here's J6 and it takes us all the way to Mirabi and it looks like it continues on up to Salinas so we'll fly right up the Salinas Valley and then over to San Jose so Gilroy is right here
interesting you don't see rain clouds over California this time of year but there you have it well this is uh, this is actually over the desert which is even more bizarre interesting So we are now over the Central Valley. Just entering it. And just straight ahead to Avenal now. Which is 72 miles out. And everything looks nominal. As they say in NASA when nothing blows up. So back in a few. Coming up on Avenal. Got some traffic here. be turning towards Robbie and you can see our top of descent there so it does show traffic here it's, well you already went by <laughs> you use cooking and we've got the Salinas Valley coming up here and as I've pointed out in several other videos this is of the salad bowl. A lot of your lettuce and veg veggies are grown here. You can see the Pacific way off in the distance. Central Valley off to our right. San Jose straight ahead. And we begin our turn. As I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, this is the Zebo mod. So it's an addition to an enhancement for the you know, Laminar Research or X Plane Default 737. It does come with a sound pack and some other features that make it a lot more immersive. So we need to think about our descent, we're just about um, 20 miles from top of descent. Looking at our map, this is the approach plate for the ILS 30 left. Gilroy is our initial approach fix and I believe it's about 8,000. Clyde is at 4,000. I'm going to set up for 4,000 because that's ultimately where I want to be so that I can be ready for the localizer and guide slope. So down to 4,000. Now this plane automatically, or the Boeings automatically, begin their descent. I shouldn't have to do anything to begin, as I have to do in the JAR A320 and I guess the 330, I don't have that one. So we should see our power come back. doing well on fuel and 
and you can see our star laid out nicely here. You can pull that up as a reference. Oops. Don't need to see the airport. Ravi 4. So Avenal, we're in here somewhere, there's Robbie, and Salinas BOR, and then we head over to Gilro, the same 8,000 feet. Alright, let's pay attention. I hear all kinds of noises. <laughs> Not sure what they are part of the sound pack. Realism. So there we are, top of descent. Throttles are coming back. You can see our little bug that shows us where we should be in relationship to our descent path. And descending rapidly. So I didn't do a thing. It's all automatic. It's the Pacific way out there in the I don't know, Hayes. Salinas Valley, right below us. And we're just going to head right up the valley. Salinas is at the, um, the top. You can see the river faintly. There's some little airports along here. I've taken a Bonanza and just kind of flown about 5,000 feet. Did some touch and goes along the way. At the end of all this is Paso Robles, the wine country. So, descending. So, at Goli, which is 30 miles out, we want to be at flight level 15. Well, it's not a flight level. Drag required. So, we want to get out some speed brakes. check to make sure they're up and they are you can see them so now that we're powering up I probably don't need them So we'll just watch that. But you can see our arc way out there. Uh, that's the 4,000. So you can see um, Clyde out here. So I think we're going to be in real good shape. If you look at our FMS here, Gilro at 6,100 feet. All right, why don't uh, we get back together as we uh, get a little closer to Gilro? 
All right, we are passing through 10,000 feet and time for landing lights. And let's see, let's zoom in a little bit. So Gilro is our next waypoint, and that will get us well on our way to Clyde, which is our IAF or initial approach fix. So we are to be at 6100, almost 6200 at Gilro just waiting for that to happen and then Clyde 4000 we are below 250 because we are under the 10,000 foot limit and this is 101 which takes you over into Monterey and Gilroy, which is the um, garlic capital of the world, they call it. Also a lot of strawberries, strange bedfellows. So I'm going to be watching for our localizer and glide slope bugs. Oops. So we've got a hollow one here which means it's um, eminent. When it goes solid that means it's active and will probably be falling into position. Just watching our altitude. I think we're going to be fine. I don't know what this valley is, but it leads you right into San Jose. San Jose being at the southern tip of the uh, San Francisco Bay and the most southern end of Silicon Valley. And um, San Jose is a very popular airport for that purpose. A little easier to get in and out of than KSFFO. Whoops, I think I had too many letters in there. Okay. Alright, so I'm looking for my localizer bug. Let me just make sure that I have the localizer frequency on both radios. And I've got the course set for both of them. And hopefully as we get closer, there, um, just saw it slide across. And I'm going to see if I can't slow this airplane down. It's really tricky. See if I can't coax it a little bit. So I've got a live localizer bug. So I'm going to click approach. And we turn towards it a little bit. Almost didn't get that out. <laughs> and here is Clyde. So we'll fly under the glide slope. So our localizer has been intercepted. And why don't I deploy some spoilers to slow things down. 
I'm concerned that the engines are not doing their job. Well, I guess they're spooled all the way down. Let's zoom in a little bit. Alright, so we have an active glide slope bug and we'll see this change from white to green. And we can go with a notch of flaps. And we'll crank it down again. Maybe another notch of flaps. And we don't want flaps and spoilers, so... Spoilers off. And we have our guide slope. I'm going to go ahead and engage our second autopilot. And this will give us our flare, auto flare, I guess. It's almost auto land, but. So we've got localizer and glide slope. Still 12 miles out. I'm hoping flaps will slow this guy down. Might as well crank this all the way to 140. Uh, be rough speed today. I'm going to cheat a little bit and drop even more flaps. You can see that I'm um, getting close to a warning here. Now if I drop the gear I don't like to drop it this far out, but... And taxi lights, runway turn off lights, and now I'm just praying I get a nose wheel. I've had some issues with that. Go ahead and set my brake. Auto break. I hope I can get to uh, forty degrees flaps. Alright, full flaps, and we're getting down to 140. If anybody's got any ideas on how to slow this thing down faster. Alright, land three, that's what we want to see. If we saw a single channel in yellow, not good. That means we did not click that second autopilot. 
So we'll see flare appear here. One thousand thousand feet stabilized, Mr. Gorgon. Land three. This is flare. And reverse. to normal and we'll roll off here whoops didn't mean to stop let's get off the active runway <laughs> yes I know the Auto throttle is off. So we'll stop here before crossing a live. So we can flip that off. Good. And time to clean up the airplane. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can. Flaps are, are um, sorry, spoilers are already down but we want to put up our flaps and we want to shut off our landing lights and strobe logo is on to keep the marketing people happy cleaning up our airplane. Now my friend Steve Haynes, and uh, by the way I'm going to put a link to his videos. He goes into a lot more detail than I do on the systems. So if you really want to get to understand things like center of gravity and fuel load and all that uh, he's your man so uh, subscribe too he'd like to have a few more subscribers but he has auto gate which I do not so I don't have a marshal over there to help me pull in. All right, um, probably turn off some lights here. Don't need all these. And if I was on the ball, I would have turned on my uh, APU, but we'll just go with ground power. And then we can remove fuel from our engines. So that completes our flight in the Zebo. Um, if you have any comments or questions, of course, they are welcome. 
until next time, take care.